up. You just have to put stop video, click on it and it should go black. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversaries which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. Then the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their, heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Prezesites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be there with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm today is Psalm 63, 1 through 8. We will read Psalm verses 1 through 8 respect, responsibly. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands to your hands. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul thanks you, your right hand holds me fast. Second reading today is reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians 
chapter 10, 1 through 13. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. <coughs> now these things occurred as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents and do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Salome fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for the fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. In 2007, Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholas, Nicholson um, starred together in a movie called The Bucket List. Is anybody familiar with that film? Has anybody yeah. seen it? Some yes? Okay. But more than the 8 o'clock. Yeah. You, got, you guys win. Congratulations. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, it's a film that's worth watching. It's about two men who discover that they're both terminally, terminally ill 
and they only have about a year left to live. So they create their bucket list, a list of all the things they want to accomplish and do before they kick the bucket, as they say. And throughout this movie, they go off and they're having these great adventures. They go skydiving, they're traveling around, um, they're climbing mountains and everything. They're having these great adventures. And as time goes on, as the movie progresses, one of the characters realizes that the most important thing to him isn't all of these adventures, but reconciling with his family and meeting up with his estranged family who he hasn't seen in years and coming to terms with the difficulties that they've had in the past and realizing that relationship is the most important thing. And I would take it a step further than that and add that relationship to God is the most important thing of all. And in many ways, that is exactly what Jesus is saying. That's what Jesus' point is in the gospel that we just heard this morning. In the gospel that we just heard this morning, Jesus refers to two very obscure events that is only found in this gospel, in the gospel of Luke. Some people come to Jesus and they ask him about some Galileans who were apparently killed while offering sacrifices in the temple. In the midst of a religious ritual, Pilate came in and had them slaughtered and their blood mixed with the blood of the animals that they were sacrificing. A horrific sacrilege, terrible event, but something that was done as the result of a choice that somebody made, a man-made evil. In fancy philosophy terms, they call that a moral evil, a bad thing that happens as a result of the choice of another person. And then Jesus brings up this other example, the Tower of Salome. And this is another thing that we only hear about in this gospel, but apparently there was a tower outside the Pool of Salome, which is a sacred pool. And apparently it fell, probably during an earthquake or because of faulty construction. And as a result, 18 people died. In philosophy, that's what we call a natural evil. Bad things that happen to people as a result of the change and chances of life in this world. Something like an earthquake or a flood or a volcano. All that kind of happenstance that we get exposed to just by nature of being alive. And so these people come to Jesus, and they're implicitly asking him, well, why did this happen? Is it because they did something wrong? That's kind of the assumption that they have. And similar to other places in Scripture where, Jesus said, where people come to Jesus with a blind man and say, well, why is this guy bl born blind? Is, be is it because he sinned or his family sinned? And Jesus tells them it's not because he or his parents sinned, but so God's glory can be shown. And Jesus gives this crowd a similar answer. In this moment, Jesus reframed the question, completely switching the whole topic around on them. And basically what he says is that regardless of the reason that these people left their journey, why they left and died and perished and left this mortal coil, whatever the reason is, the important thing is that we who remain, we who are still walking this journey in the world, that we use our time wisely. Jesus uses this phrase over and over again, particularly in this section of the gospel, repent, repent, turn back to God. The, the Greek word for it is metanoia, which doesn't really encapsulate, repent doesn't encapsulate the entirety of what is trying to be communicated here. Metanoia isn't just saying, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I regret this thing that's happened. Metanoia is a complete internal transformation. It is completely turning your life around from the ways that you are walking and the ways that you are being in the world and turning all of your time and attention and energy and effort to a life in faith in God. Metanoia, change, transformation. That's what this season of Lent is all about. Turning away from things that distract us from God and turning back to God. None of us know how long we have to walk on this earth. In the examples that we just heard this morning, we could be in the midst of a religious ritual and leave the world as a result of a violent act of somebody, or there could be a catastrophic natural disaster, 
And at any moment, we may find ourselves standing before the throne of our God and Maker. However much time we have in the world, however long or however brief, the important thing is that we are using that time to walk faithfully, to walk lovingly, to walk in care and dignity and in the grace of God and uplifting one another on that journey and on that path. That's the point that Jesus is trying to communicate to the crowd, that the time is short, to use our time in this world well and wisely to build our relationship up with God. It's as the poet once said, life is short, and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who walk the journey with us. But so be swift to love and be quick to be kind. Amen. Amen. Together, let us stand and proclaim the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in and one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will pray responsively as written in your service bulletin. Jesus Christ intercedes for us at all times. Together, let us remember and pray to God through Christ, saying, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church, that the fasting of these 40 days may clear away much that is needless, and so open our eyes to the bright glory of the cross, we pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O Lord. For the church, that those baptized at Easter will learn from us to read and ponder and cherish the scriptures. From our diocesan cycle of prayer, Christ Church Cathedral, Indianapolis, the very Reverend Dr. Gray Lissonet, the Reverend Canon Hippolyte Fernandez Rianda, the Reverend Canon Thomas Kreider Reed, the Reverend Fatima Yakubu Medeus. Have mercy, O Lord. For our divided and restless world, that those who hold power over others may be troubled and transformed by the demands of justice. We pray especially for Joe Biden, our president, Eric Holcomb, our governor, Chris Jensen, our mayor, for this city of Noblesville. We pray. Have, have mercy, mercy, O Lord. We pray for those serving in the military, Nam Cook, Michael Dedimore, 
Samantha Dingman, Ben Garrett, Caleb Garrett, Tommy Harris, Brayton Harrison, Joey Lewis, Pam Knowlton, Ken Morrison, Nancy Pate, Michael Tupons, and Jacob Zuniga. We pray, have, have mercy, mercy O Lord. Lord, for this gathered community, that the solemn brightness of Lent may open our eyes to these times, their folly and their worth. We pray, have, have mercy, mercy O Lord. Lord. For those who have asked for our prayers, especially Grant Cook, Sabra and Sam Graves, Clint Hagen. For those celebrating birthdays, Tracy Hagen-Smith, John Chalfin, Kelly Tabling, Janet Manning, Meredith Promozek, Steve Murphy. For those celebrating anniversaries, we pray. Have, Have mercy, O Lord. For the dead, especially those who held to and handed on God's commandments until our day, that they may be at peace. June Burns, Joan Newworth, Charles Harrison. We pray. Have, Have mercy, O Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, all mercy. We, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. A few announcements before we continue our service. Just a reminder that we are continuing our Lenten study of the book, Your Faith, Your Life by Jennifer Gambler. Um, if you haven't read the book, I encourage you to come and join anyway, just for the conversation. Um, it's, a really, it's a really well done book um, that goes through kind of our history as Christians, where the Bible comes from, um, how we understand it and read it. And, more about our faith. Um, so I highly recommend that you come join us if you can. We'll be doing this through Lent and well into Easter. That's every Sunday morning downstairs at nine o'clock. Um, also a reminder that our contemporary service, we are continuing through Lent. So every Sunday evening at six o'clock right here, we have our contemporary service. So we have very um, live and lively and upbeat music. We gather around the altar for communion, um, we get to have a conversation and a dialogue during um, the service instead of just me talking at people, which I always think is fun. Um, so if you haven't been, I highly encourage you to come. It's, it's a really good time. So contemporary service today at 6. And finally, um, just a reminder that as spring is just about here and we are approaching Easter and the time of um, things being made new and refreshment, um, we have a spring cleanup day scheduled for the church that will be on April 3rd after the 10 o'clock service. So on April 3rd after 10 o'clock service, we're gonna encourage as many people who can to stay and help clean the church, do that kind of deep clean stuff that um, needs to be done periodically. So that's April 3rd after the 10 o'clock service. Hope that you can join us then. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. 
We hold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world 
and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the journey with us. So make haste to love and be quick to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.